Hello and welcome to the channel or welcome back, but if you're new here, you might not know that for a little while now I've been partnering with a note-taking and knowledge management software called Scrintle. And Scrintle's app has just had a huge overhaul. They are now calling it Scrintle, the playground for the mind. And I think all of the updates that they've made have made this app a lot more interesting and powerful for personal knowledge management. In fact, I'm so interested in what they're doing that I actually partnered with them for their launch, I've been working with them to make videos about how to use this new version of Scrintle. Two of those videos are already live on their channel, so you can check them out at the links below. And I will also include a link to their product hunt page, which is live as of October 15th. And if you access Scrintle there for a limited time, you can get a free trial of the app. After that free trial, Scrintle has two pricing plans, a one year and a four year plan. I would also like to thank Scrintle for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel so much over the past year or so. So although I have partnered with Scrintle to make some educational videos about their app, they are working with a bunch of creators and I've actually only really got to dig into two new features within this app of the many that they have added. So in this video I wanted to take you along with me as I explore and discover the new features and usability of this new version of the Scrintle app so that you can see it happening in real time and kind of get my initial thoughts and reactions to how this version has changed from the previous. Hopefully this will give you a little bit of insight into their app as well if you are thinking about purchasing it. I will also say that if you're specifically interested in the Settlecast there are other apps on the market that are functional with a Settlecast in system that are free. So you don't need to pay for an app in order to get the functionality and value out of a Settlecast in. But Scrintle makes the Settlecast in process very visual and tangible. And so I know that there are some of you out there that might prefer that to something more text-based and kind of conceptual like Obsidian. First things first though, what is Scrintle? Scrintle is a personal knowledge management app and it's kind of a mashup of Notion and and Miro and Obsidian, if you're familiar with any of those tools. It combines the freedom and playfulness of an infinite canvas with reusable and dynamic documents. It's trying to keep all of your thinking and brainstorming and research and planning and writing and sharing practices all in a single place to make a seamless transition between ideas and insights and eventually sharing those with the world. And personally, I think a tool like this is becoming a necessity in a world where we all seem to work three jobs and have seven different social media apps on our phone and be getting our news from every imaginable source. In a digital world, we need a digital tool to help us make sense of it all and store it all and make all of that knowledge our own as well so that we can consume it more ethically and uh, effortlessly. And basically, Scrintle is trying to be that tool. So let's actually hop into Scrintle now and check it all out. So this is the desk space in Scrintle and it's kind of your home base in Scrintle where you can always come back and try things out and clear it off and move things out of here when they're ready for consumption um, or further use. And right now you'll see that I actually have some things in here and that's because I was recording videos for them and so I needed some kind of content. So I have a handful of notes in here, but this is not my primary Scrintle account. This is kind of a fresh one that I was using to make videos for them. But the first thing that I want to try out in this new version of Scrintle is building connections between documents. Documents is what Scrintle is now calling kind of notes or what they used to call cards. I want to try building some connections between documents because that's integral to the Settlecast in system. And if you're not familiar with the Settlecast in system, you you can find many other videos on my channel about it because this is the system that I use to make sense of the world and write my PhD. Because this is an infinite canvas, I am gonna like leave all of this stuff here and I'm just gonna move over to a different place that is blank on this infinite canvas. To figure out how to make connections in Scrintle, I am going to first need to create a document to connect to. And the way that you used to do this in Scrintle was to go to a left menu and click on add a new card, but they're not called cards anymore and there is no more left menu there. Instead, the menu is now at the bottom with these cute little icons. It looks like I can select create new doc and just add it anywhere on my board. I could also click create new block and the blocks are like the building blocks of Scrintle. They're the smallest pieces of information, the smallest items that you can add onto boards, which is the infinite canvas space. And documents are a type of block. So I'm kind of curious what happens if I click that. It's opening a block. What type of block? 
Oh, a text block. Okay, so if you cr click create new block, you get just a straight up text block. Let's actually write something in here. The closest book I have on hand here is Juggling from Antiquity to the Middle Ages by Tom Wall, a great juggler and circus performer. So I'm just gonna like, I've got a bunch of stickies in here, so I'm just gonna use this book to add a note and let's actually add it as a text block. Okay, so here is a concept from his book, um, just added as a text block. One thing I'm curious about is can I form connections between a text block and a document? My guess is no. This is editing Morgan here to say that I was absolutely wrong. You can add a connector between any type of block and scrintle. Later on in this video, I figure out how to add a connector and what I do between documents, you can also do between any type of block. I can add a block. Oh, I can turn that into a document. Sorry to pop in here so quickly after my previous interjection. Ugh, editing Morgan, what a nuisance. But I just wanted to point out that this interplay between documents and text blocks is so interesting from a Tettelkasten perspective because in a Tettelkasten part of the process is creating fleeting notes that don't enter into your permanent Tettelkasten and then adding permanent notes which are there for all time and so in Scrintle you could imagine a text block as your fleeting note. It's not going into your full notes library whereas a document does go into your actual library and is searchable. That's something that I don't get out of Obsidian. Every single thing I put into Obsidian is essentially a permanent note. Okay I'll let you get back to the video now, no more interjections. So now I've just turned my text block into a document and I've got a different menu above it, including something called toggle links section. Interesting, so I can see that this document is on my desk and then I can also see all of the other documents on my desk. So if this was in a board, then I would be able to see just the other stuff on the board, AKA just the other stuff that it's related to for whatever project I'm working on because boards are kind of um, places to focus in on a specific idea or project that you're working on. That's really exciting actually. Of course it has no like connections. So let's click into this. Oh, what was that? Oh, that's amazing. So when I select some text, I have a bunch of options. I can highlight it. I can insert a link. So it's just a, a normal text editor. I can add code, strike through, etc. Right now it's bolded. Um, all right, let's unbold that and let's try to link. Let's first give this document a title and let's call this other document just juggling because I know that I think a lot about juggling and so I would usually have a document that's just called juggling so that I can connect everything about juggling to that document. So of course, we're gonna try to connect this to that document. That's perfect. One thing that Scrintle did say about this new version of their app is that it's gonna be faster and that definitely is proving true right now. It used to be in the old version of the app that when I searched for a document, it would kind of take a while. It would kind of spin its wheels. And now this time it just popped right up. Let's say that I wanted to put that here instead of the word juggling, because that's usually how I would take my subtle cast in notes is not to add links in like a tag section or anything, but rather to actually include the links as I am typing so that it kind of seamlessly expresses the thoughts that I'm having. So what if I remove the word juggling and I type a plus sign in the middle of a paragraph? Okay, it's still gonna search my library. That's awesome. And I'm gonna click down arrow, enter, and it's just in there in the text. So that's very easy, I love that. And if I click on that, it opens up, even though it's also on this board. I wonder what would happen if I, cause this button I'm pretty sure um, adds it to the board. What happens if I do that? Oh, interesting. I can add that to this board twice. Now I'm pretty sure if I opened this side panel and I went to docs, that there is only one version of the doc juggling. So it hasn't actually duplicated that document, even though there's two of it on the board. One thing I am curious about actually is if I'm allowed to name two different documents with the exact same name. So I'm gonna try creating a doc and you can also do that from the docs page. And let's try calling it juggling. So there I've created a second doc called juggling and that is allowed in Scrintle. And I do understand why they do that because if I'm creating multiple boards about different but similar projects, then let's say I'm doing it for essays and I'm always gonna wanna have a literature review section in my essay, then I might want many, many documents that are just called literature review because they're on different boards. And so the context for this literature review is the board that it's on, it's that project. Personally, if I'm using Scrintle mainly as a Tettelkasten, which I guess I wouldn't really recommend because Scrintle is so much more powerful than just a Tettelkasten really requires, I think. 
So I feel like it's best if you want to have a settle casting, but also be able to create projects and brainstorm projects and do your writing, etc within Scrintle, but in a settle casting, it's not great to have two documents that have the exact same name. It kind of makes it more difficult to search and more difficult to form meaningful connections. So that's something to watch out for if you're predominantly using Scrintle as a settle casting, is just be aware that you can name two documents the same thing. Obviously you don't have to, it's just other apps like say Obsidian warn you if you're doing that, they won't let you. Scrintle does let you and maybe you want that. But let's go back to my desk. This is so funny because now I have two jugglings here, but they are the same juggling as each other. What if I, I just, I just put juggling inside juggling. And when I did that, it also did it here. Oh my gosh, it's jugglingception. This is so fun and funny. I'm gonna get rid of one of those jugglings and I'm gonna remove it also from inside the core juggling. <laughs> The juggling document was juggling with itself. That was hilarious. Anyway, what I really wanna know about is the connections. I've built a connection between juggling and earliest pictorial depiction of juggling, which you can see represented right down here in the links section of this document. And if I click on the juggling link, you'll see that there are no further links because I assume there are no links in the juggling document. Now, what if I added a link in here? Um, Let's create a new document in here called Juggling is Life, which is a subtle nod to Ted Lasso. And as soon as I created that document within the juggling document, so I've created a connection, but I've also created a new document. That link also appeared over here in my earliest pictorial depiction of juggling note. And if I drop down there, I can see if there's further links, which this is kind of interesting because it has the functionality of a digital title casting, which I love where there is no hierarchy of notes. Like I'm not putting notes in, in an order. I'm putting them in randomly. And then I'm relying on backlinks and searching and maybe like hub notes in order to find uh, my ideas. So that's great. Scrintle has that bi-directional linking capacity that I love so much in a digital title casting. But with this um, ability to create dropdowns of all of the links within links within links, it also has this kind of funny analog title casting use where there is a bit of a hierarchy within each note because this note on the earliest pictorial depiction it is most relevant to the note juggling, but it also has like a farther relationship to juggling is life. And then if there was any notes in juggling is life, it would have an even more distant connection to this other thing. And so I can actually see the lineage of thought. And that was something that Scrintle said that they had made more powerful in this version of the app was traceability. So they said that it's easier to trace ideas back to their source. And I would say that is appearing true, at least from the context of an individual note. Something else that they seem to have removed in this version of the app is the actual physical connection lines between documents. And I'm actually super grateful for that because I did find it a bit confusing at times before when they would have arrows in between all of the notes and you could not get rid of them. I just noticed that I've got um, a button down here to draw a connector. Oh, wow, okay. That is so interesting. So I can make that connector an arrow. I can make it solid or dashed. I can make it smaller, larger. Oh, I can make it both ways. I can change the color of the connector. So I'm glad that they kept these arrows because sometimes it is really useful to see like visually that connection, but I'm glad that they made it optional because I assume I can also delete the arrow entirely. And it's amazing that you can change the color of the arrows so you could distinguish between types of connections on a board. Oh my goodness, I feel like I have barely scratched the surface of this new version of Scrintle. Like for instance, I didn't even, this is about a pictorial depiction of juggling and they actually have this plus sign is all of the types of blocks that you can add into your boards or into your documents. And I'm not gonna go through all of these in this video, but I would like to on my own because it's very cool. But what I am gonna do is um, upload an image and I wanna see if I can drag and drop an image directly into this note because this note is about a pictorial depiction of juggling. And so I actually wanna put that picture in here. It looks like I can add it into the middle of the note wherever I want, but I can also just add it to this board. So let's add it to the board and then let's take it from the board and add it into the note. 
and it leaves one on the board as well. So if I don't want that, I'm gonna have to delete it separately, but that's beautiful. Like that's pretty seamless. Honestly, it's really funny that I'm using a note about juggling because this new version of Scrintle kind of feels like juggling. Like I can, I can grab that ball from here and drop it over there. I can, I can pull this from there over there. Can I pull just a link? No, you have to pull the whole text. It's very fun. Like I can really just like move things around and I haven't even started playing with like headings or colors or like dividing lines or video or PDFs or any of those other things that I know Scrintle has. But I feel like I've already rambled on for quite a while and I don't have time to go through every single aspect and feature in this new app that they've got, the Playground for the Mind. I do think it's really living up to that new name, the Playground for the Mind. So I'm gonna stop playing around in the app now and address you more directly. I hope that candid little exploration of Scrintle was helpful to you in some way to see if this is an app that is right for you, or at least see all of the other features that other note-taking and personal knowledge management apps have to offer that might not be in the one you're currently using so that you can better understand how you're using your app and how different that could be if you were in a different software like Scrintle. Obviously Scrintle is not going to be for everyone and personally I do love Obsidian and the simplicity of it, but if you are a visual thinker or if you are planning projects alongside your Tettlecasting system, then I think Scrintle is an excellent choice, especially in this updated version. It's fast, it's beautiful, it's easy to learn, it has bi-directional linking, it also has offline use now, so when you change things Things, you don't have to be on the internet and then as soon as you get back onto the internet it's gonna make all of those updates for you anyway I'm going to leave this video there thank you so much to Scrintle for sponsoring this channel congratulations to them on creating a really easy to use beautiful app if you have any questions or comments about Scrintle then please feel free to leave them below if I can't answer your question I have seen some Scrintle staff in my comment sections before so they might respond to your question and if nothing else I'm in frequent conversation with Scrintle about new projects they're working on and future videos videos for my channel so I can send your question over to them. Let me know in the comment section below which note-taking software or knowledge management app you are personally using and what the features are there that you prefer. I am by no means an expert on apps of any kind. I am not a techie person. I just love knowledge management and organizing knowledge efficiently and effectively and I think that you can do that with a paper and pen if that's what works for you. But I think Scrintle also really gives the paper and pen a run for its money. So thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you in another video again soon. Bye!